I think the AI for Good uh, Global Summit is coming at an extremely important time, and uh, it's at a time when uh, artificial intelligence is accelerating in terms of uh, the development, in terms of uh, kind of the use across many, many sectors of um, society and the economy, and where the question of the ethics of AI and how do we make sure that uh, AI is working for the good of humanity and uh, how, how do we mitigate against some of the, the, the problems that could arise with the use of AI. Uh, and having that summit that brings together um, United Nations agencies, uh, companies, uh, civil society, uh, academic researchers and others is really, really important at this stage. And it's, uh, you know, usually th the work kind of tends to uh, do things uh, uh, a little bit later down the line when technologies have developed. And this time it seems like uh, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, getting ahead of the game. So I think I mean, we, we really have, um, you know, to put it simplistically, potentially two paths uh, for AI, but one where, uh, you know, it goes without really um, a clear direction and it, it, it sort of it develops. I mean, th there'll be good applications, there'll be applications that are less good, that are potentially harmful in some cases. Um, but th the issue is that we know that there are already uh, problems with, with AI. We know there's already issues with the data bias and uh, how the AI could can augment that uh, and, and kind of um, ma make that even worse over time. Uh, and as with any technology that's powerful, and AI will be extremely powerful, we know that already. Uh, there are, uh, there will be people who use it for uh, things that uh, either are not very helpful to society or, or even uh, potentially very harmful. Uh, it could fall into, b you know, the technology can also be used by bad, bad actors who, who, who have malicious intentions. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we, you know, if we're more proactive in trying to, to guide the technology, trying to guide the development of technology to make sure that things like uh, bias are dealt with uh, effectively in the development of the technology, um, that, uh, uh, that hu human rights are well protected in the way that uh, the, the AI is developed, but also the way it's deployed and used uh, by companies and by governments and others. Um, and uh, that, you know, we could end up in a much in a much better place in the future. And one of the key things that that uh, are uh, you know would be really important to deal with is the issue of inequality. Uh, we know that with AI there will be huge disruption to the workplace, and uh, that's already starting with with um, main, many digital technologies. Uh, but if that leads to um, a lot of people losing their jobs, or uh, instead of more secure jobs, ending up with uh, jobs that are insecure uh, with low pay uh, and we end up having uh, an even increase in the wealth inequality that exists today, uh, we will also end up in a situation where uh, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of resentment uh, towards uh, uh, those who are able to, to benefit from the fruits of AI. And that's something we need to preempt. That's something we need to make sure that doesn't happen so that we don't end up 20 or 30 years from now with the consequences of a much more unequal, unequal world uh, where there is a lot more anger. Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, putting principles or putting ideas into practice uh, usually takes a lot of time. Uh, and if we look at how things happen at the national level, where, where governments uh, start looking at an issue, they start uh, having uh, researching it, uh, having you know, in a parliamentary democracy, for example, they, they'll go and have parliamentary committees looking at it, and it kind of it takes time to to develop that. Um, and the the, the difficulty I, I, I fear with with AI is that it's advancing very quickly. If you look at automation, for example, you know. It, when we start having self-driving cars, that will have a very rapid, potentially, impact. We're talking about, you know, in, in a space of years, on many people who uh, whose job is to drive cars, as taxi drivers or truck drivers or others. And if the um, policy and legislative making um, um, process doesn't accelerate, doesn't keep up with the changes. I'm afraid we will end up in a very difficult situation. We'll end up in, in a situation where laws and policies are really not keeping up with where technology is at. And if we look at the internet, um, things like uh, online harassment, which ex has existed for nearly 20 years, uh, is still not properly addressed by in many, many countries. And so the, the somehow I think there's going to, be ha to have to be much more agile way of dealing with uh, technological innovation in the way uh, government policy is formulated. Mm -hmm.